Hey everybody, we're here in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10 today. This is an interesting one, I think. The heart knows its own bitterness, and no stranger shares its joy. This is a wise observation, but it's not particularly unusual, this is something that we all know, that everybody has their own thoughts and their own feelings going on inside of them that nobody else really understands. We are individuals, and the Bible recognizes that. And I could go on about this, but this is an important reminder that God does not just treat us as a group. God does not just treat us as part of this block or that nation or whatever, but God treats us as individual people. The Lord is able to sort through the mass of humanity to love and to care for each individual person. So the Bible recognizes that. And as individuals, every single person that you're ever going to meet, including you, has their own joys, their own sorrows, their own dreams, their own regrets that maybe they never share with anybody. And maybe if they even did share them, you would not fully understand them because it's the heart of a man that understands what's going on in his own heart. So it's important for us to be able to look to ourselves, identify our own joys and sorrows and dreams and so on, and handle them the way that we ought to handle them. You, you want to become a fully realized person. And there's a whole lot of weird pop psychology I could get into here. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, you need to understand the way that you tick and the way that you think. You need to understand why you do certain things, why you believe certain things, or that you believe certain things, or that you feel them. And you might think, well, I already know that about myself. I can tell you from personal testimony, there have been times where I've been acting in such a way that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me until I realized, huh, I was angry about that. Or I didn't realize I was believing that until I said those words that came out of my mouth. So we ought to know these things about ourselves to recognize what's going on. Because if you allow bitterness to go unaddressed in your heart, that's going to be a root of sin that's going to be coming up. And if you don't realize that you're harboring a ton of hate and anger towards your dad or your mom, for example, then you're not going to be able to handle that sin. And you're going to spend forever trying to stamp out the fire rather than getting to the source. But also, if you've got joy in your heart and things that make you glad and are, are good and godly, but you never express them, you never get a chance to realize them, you're missing out on the life that God's given to you. And the Lord does not desire that for you. He wants you to have abundant life, as Jesus said. But there is another sense here. Every man understands his own joys, his own bitterness, Solomon says. But there's another sense where we hardly understand ourselves at all. And only God is the one who really knows us. Here's a famous verse from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17 verses 9 and 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? But the Lord, he says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. There's a famous verse there about how we can allow our hearts to take us places that we never understood. You ever had that day where you sit up and you go, how did we get here? How did I do that? Where did all this motivation come from? Or you blow up at a comment that somebody makes to you and you're like, what is going on in my own heart? Here's the good news. God knows. God knows the heart of a man. God knows what's going on inside of you. Especially if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling within you. And he can teach you who you are. God wants you, as we just said, to understand the way you tick like he does so that he can use that to make you into the person he's called you to be. This is what we call sanctification, where the Spirit redeems what is good out of you. He takes away the corruption and he conforms you to the image of Christ in such a way that only you can live out and express. So to that end, the Lord will reveal to you what is good and what is bad about yourself, what is joyful, what is bitter, all those things. And he will use then those realizations to move you forward in your walk with him. I found that in prayer, I'll be praying for things and I'm learning about the Lord through his word. and I'm learning what's good and what's godly, but I'll have moments where I realize something about myself. I realize my own joys or bitternesses or dreams or regrets or pain or even happiness. And the Lord will draw those things out in prayer. So I I can't stress enough, you've got to spend time with the Lord, not just to get it done, but to be in his presence and let him work on your soul. And as a final point, as the Lord helps us, as individuals work through our own mess and our own, not just the mess, I don't want to make it sound like it's all bad, but through the good things too, right? To fully realize what is good. We can do this for each other. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. You may not be able to know everything about a person, but you can certainly sympathize with them. You know, none of us can really understand everything every person goes through, but you know what it's like to be 
sorrowful or to be joyful. You know what it's like to be in pain or to feel like life's not fair or to be angry. So the Bible says, don't show up just trying to stamp that out in people. Recognize what's going on there and reciprocate, you know, help them through that process. Everybody has their own joys, Solomon says, bitterness. So be patient with them. Be kind with them like God is with you. And sometimes, too, we can know somebody who knows us really well, and they can help us work through what's going on inside of us. And they might be able to recognize what's going on in your heart before you even do. Or maybe they say something, and you're like, that's not quite right, but you're on to something. You know, and that leads you along that process. And a good brother or sister will help you redirect those joys, those sorrows, that bitterness, those dreams and regrets towards the glory of Jesus Christ, causing you to be the man or the woman that God has called you to be and that he's sanctifying you to be. That's what good brothers and sisters in Christ do. So interesting lesson today, I think. You are an individual. You've got to know who you are and how you tick. God knows already and can help you and can also use that to give you the life that he's desired for you, and that we as brothers and sisters in Christ can help one another with that process as well. That way, the fog of sin falls. We're not just acting blindly or without thinking or without feeling, and the light of God's truth will shine in, and he'll use us to do this for more people, and that's how the process goes. It begins with salvation, continues with sanctification, and it'll end when we're in the presence of God where we will know even as we are known right now. God bless you guys. Have a good one.